right, we're going to be in John chapter 5 in the Bible. And the title of tonight's message is, I Have No Man. I Have No Man. Uh, John chapter 5. <clears throat> Don't forget Spanish church Sunday night, 7 p.m. Invite people. Saturday. I say what I say. Sunday. Sunday. Uh, there we go. They can come Sunday night at 7 p.m. too. Um, but we have Saturday night and uh, very good. By the way, we still have some Spanish rice in the fridge if you want some Spanish rice at the church. It's in there. There might be some chips or something. I don't know what's left. No, the chips are all gone. There's uh, something else in there. And if uh, you want some, uh, we can have that. You can have that at the service. Just needs warmed up. John 5. <clears throat> let's read verses 1 through 9. After this, there went out a feast. There was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the... Uh, um, by the sh uh, by the sheep market uh, pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue uh, Bethes Bethes <laughs> Bethesda, uh, having two uh, having five porches. Uh, in these lay the great multitude of impotent folks, uh, blind, halt, withered, and waiting for the moving of the water. I have a problem. My Bible has fallen apart a bunch of times, and I glued it together, and some of the pages it glued too close, uh, and right there in the middle where I'm reading there, uh, sometimes it's, it's pinched off. And uh, so I know I need to replace my Bible sometime, but uh, it's, uh, it's, it's hard to do. There's not very many of these left. And so uh, there we go. <clears throat> For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Um, whoever then first, after the troubling of the, of the water, stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there which had and infirmity thirty years and uh, thirty and eight years. And Jesus, when Jesus saw him lie, he knew that he had been now a long time in that case. He said unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? The impotent man answered, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another steppeth down before me. Jesus said unto him, Rise, take up thy bed and walk. And immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. And in the same day was the Sabbath. Let's pray. Lord, help us to understand your word and help us to uh, just be drawn into the, the story and the truth of the word of God and, and realize this is a real person and, and get the truth from it we need. Lord, speak to us, Father, and help us to help those who have no man. And uh, I pray that uh, we would help each other and uh, be helped uh, by people when it's necessary. Thank you for the chance to be here at church tonight. We love you. You've been good to us. We praise you for all you do and more for who you are. And we pray tonight that we would uh, just hear from you. We need you to speak now in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> And in this story, um, imagine the scene here. We have a just a weird situation for whatever reason. The Lord and a lot of stuff was happening supernatural. There was demon possessed people everywhere. There was uh, there was uh, miracles happening everywhere during the time that the, the kingdom of heaven was at hand. And and one of the things you see uh, when 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 God is near and working, you see many more miracles, and you also see many more demonic things. Um, the, the the demons get revealed by the presence of God whenever Jesus. Came Came around the demons started screaming out okay because the presence of God uh, reveals demons and, and just a lot of spiritual things happen and when God's not working not much happens at all and uh, we certainly want to see that uh, the presence of God um, uh, and, and it does bring a lot of conflict uh, whenever you follow in the Bible in this story just pick your st story in the Bible you see God working you see conflict uh, and that just always happens. And uh, uh, when, 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 things are, when things are moving, there's always friction. And, uh, and so that's what happens. And so um, <clears throat> in this story, it's a strange thing because an angel would go down to this uh, pool of Bethesda and he would stir the waters. And when he did that, the first one in the water was healed. 
And so it said all around there was a bunch of, uh, um, of seriously injured or sick people uh, all around. Uh, verse 3, and though in, in these lay a great multitude of impotent folk. Uh, that isn't uh, urban for uh, those folks are very impotent and some folks, folks aren't impotent. Um, but uh, it means impotent in, in like they cannot uh, walk and, uh, and they're sick and they're, they're, uh, they're all messed up and so um, they are not potent. They are ill or, or something's wrong with them. And, uh, <clears throat> and it says here there's a great multitude of impotent folk. Uh, blind Halt! You're gonna laugh every time I read that now, aren't you? And uh, and so, um, uh, halt, blind, withered, and waiting uh, for the moving of the water. <clears throat> Can you imagine? Here's this pool here. And around this pool is a bunch of people with all kinds of problems. Here's a guy with one leg. Here's lepers over here. And, uh, and here are uh, uh, people who are paralyzed. And they're, they're from the waist down. And here's somebody else who's paralyzed. And here's someone who's, uh, who broke their back and is walking stooped over. And here's someone else um, who is... <clears throat> has a problem with their lungs and their, their lungs don't work right and they're coughing up blood and people are bringing their loved ones here and so there's a great number around this pool. There's blind people. Or there's people um, with every kind of malady and, 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 and keeps on happening. All of a sudden, the, 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 the angel uh, uh, stirs the water up and all of a sudden here goes, whoosh, everybody dives in. Can you imagine everybody waiting by the pool and all the chaos of that? And 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 the competition. What if there's a full row of people in front of you? And 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 all the heart and, and and all these people are and the blind people. And all the, can you imagine if just bratty kids around throwing rocks into it to watch everybody jump into it? <laughs> See, Derek laughed too hard because he would have been that kid, and uh, and uh, and and so all, all the all the things that people could do. And can you imagine? What if you? Uh, what if it wasn't? What if somebody just thought they heard something? And and <clears throat> well, the blind people, the and the people who are lame, and the people with relatives there, and and everybody wanted to be the one that that, that gets healed, of course. And and can you imagine if you there's no hope from the doctor and. <clears throat> And, uh, and and all the, all, all the a great multitude of, of sick people and people with problems and and I would take my sick child there. Yeah. Okay, I would go down there and people waiting. How long do they wait? And uh, and all these things. Well, um, with all of that and 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 and, and often the, the the angel would stir that thing and. And uh, and they wanted that, and, uh, and 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 the angel verse four went down to a certain season into the pool and troubled the water, and uh, whoever then first after the troubling of the water stepped in is made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And so Jesus walks over there. He sees the pool. He knows I'm sure all about the angel, and he knows about all that. And he sees a man in his bed. Now you have to think about that. Why is he even there? He's not going to be the first one in. Okay. Um, and, and just the, the people who are lame, the paralyzed people. The only thing you have is somebody throw you in. But it said this man was there, and he's, G, Jesus is talking to him, and, and he, he says a strange question. He says, you want to be made whole? And the man says, the words really are our sermon is, Sir, I have no man to put me down there. So he's laying there by himself in a bed. He's in a bed. Okay. But it's interesting. In verse 7, he says, The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man. When the water is troubled to put me in the pool, but while I am coming, another step it down before me. You notice that every time it happens, he's trying to get there. He says, while I'm coming, somebody else gets in there first. I would lay my bed next to the water and at least try to roll into the pool. <laughs> okay. You guys have terrible sense of humor. And, uh, and, uh, but, but, but look, he's trying to get in the water. But he says, while I'm trying, somebody else always gets there before me. And I have, don't have anybody to help me get down there faster. And maybe the angel's done this enough, or maybe there's not a great multitude all the time, but, but, 
This man has no other hope. Where else, what else do you do? Go lay in your house? Go lay in the street? Go and beg? And so he says, yeah, I'm trying. I go, I crawl there every day. Every time I hear that water, I crawl there, but I, I never make it. I, I want to be better. What a strange question that is. In verse 6, Jesus saw him lie, knew that he'd been uh, there a long time in that case. He said unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? Well, what a strange question. You want to be made whole? He's, he's lame. He can't get out of bed. He's bedridden. Whatever is wrong with him. He has some kind of function because he can, he can crawl, it sounds like, or somehow try to get to the water. He can move. But maybe he's weak. Maybe he's paralyzed. Maybe, maybe from the waist down. Maybe he has cerebral palsy or muscle, muscular dystrophy. Or who knows what in the world he has. He could have anything. Would you be made whole? I think that question would have always confused me until about the last uh, three years. And now, I totally understand why I ask that to people. Because not everybody wants to be fixed. And you say, well, why? It's obvious. Why wouldn't you want to be fixed? Look, I see people with messed up lives, terrible lives. And they don't really don't want it to change. And why? I don't under, I don't know. Uh, it's it, it's tough with the homeless right now. It's tough with the drug addicts. I we're a friend. We're there to help them. <clears throat> and they want things, but they don't want to change. Yeah. And, and and when it's really offered to them. A real change. And you'll find that in bad relationships, too. They're in a terrible relationship. They always complain about the relationship. Well, why don't you leave? Well, I don't, I don't, I don't you know. What, what, what would I do? It's not that bad. And people <clears throat> don't all want to be made whole. Look, the Bible gives the answers here. If your life's messed up, the Bible will tell you to be set free. But everybody, everybody wants to really be set free. They want to do their thing more than they want to be fixed. And that's very common in a lot of people. Good people. People who come to church sometimes. The, their life's, the life they fail in the same areas and, 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 and they somewhere in there kind of want it, but they, their, their misery factor is not high enough where they really want it. It's a strange statement I realized a long, long time ago. It's you always do what you want to do. People always say, I don't think that's true. I don't want to cuss. I don't want to be have an anger problem. <clears throat> no. If you didn't want to cuss, no, you, you, you want to say it more than you don't want to say it. Yes, you don't want to say it, but your want to is stronger. You always do what you want to do. Okay? There might be some I don't want to in you, but <clears throat> you do what you want to do. A drug addict takes drugs because they want to. They want that feeling more. And they, they say, I don't want to do this anymore. But you want to more than you don't want to. And, and, uh, and you might be an addict, and that's why you want to so bad. But you always do what you want to do. You say, I don't want to get up. But you want to get paid more, so you get up. Right? That's just the way you always do what you want to do. You just got to fix your want to her. And, 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 and get it in line where you want to do the right thing more. Okay? I'm funnier than I think tonight. And, uh, and so, and, uh, but uh, it all started with the impotent joke. And, uh, and so, um, but, but you always do what you want to do. And it's a strange question. But do you really want to be changed? I'm mad at these people. Do you want to stop being mad? Well, it kind of feels good to be mad. You, you want to keep blaming. You want to keep being angry. And so that question is a legitimate question that God gives us today. Do you want to be made whole? And, and look, I just, do you want to be fixed? Do you want your life changed? Okay, here's what you have to do. Well, I don't want to do that. Okay. <laughs> because, because there is no in most cases, magic wand. God uses efforts and God gives you grace to do it. He'll give you the strength to do it, but as they, as they went on their way, they were healed. <clears throat> they had to get up and go. <clears throat> and so it's a good question. And do you really, I mean, do you really want to be like you are the rest of your life? 
Do you really want to have those issues? Do you really want to live defeated? Do you want to? Because we are more than conquerors to him that loved us. God will give you the victory. You just got to want it bad enough. You just got to decide you're going to you're going to be transformed. You're going to pray through. You're going to find a way. You're going to seek wisdom for the Bible, and you will not say the same. You got to decide that. Do you want to be changed? That's what Jesus asked him. Wilt thou be made whole? <clears throat> and Jesus asked him that. And uh, and uh, the, the man's concern. He says, "Look, I do. I'm trying." And he was. <clears throat> but understand, his trying wasn't enough. Because he needed some help. He says, I want to be made whole. I try to get there, but I have no man to get to take me there. And I, I'm too slow. And his, his sad phrase is, I have no man. I have no man. He said unto him, verse 7, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another step it down before me. Now let me take you to uh, <clears throat> um, others. Well, just let me say, others have the ability to get in there. But Jesus healed them. That's a good thing. Jesus is, I don't need this, this pool here. I'll just heal you. Okay. Now I want to go to a different story, and let's go to Luke chapter 5. We're in John 5. Let's go to Luke chapter 5. <clears throat> Luke 5. <clears throat> All right. Luke 5. Different story. Different uh, different situation. And in this story, <clears throat> in verse 17, it says, It came to pass on a certain day he was teaching, and there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by, which were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem, and the power of the Lord is present to heal them. And behold, men brought in in a bed a man which had been was taken in the palsy, and they brought and they sought means to bring him in and lay him before him. And when they could not find by what way they might bring him in, because of the multitude, they went upon the housetop and let him down through the roof, the tile, uh, through the tiling, and his uh, and his couch into the midst before Jesus. <clears throat> this man had a man. He had several of them, and you know what? They brought him to Jesus. Can you imagine this story? It says people come from all over Galilee to come be healed and to hear him. <clears throat> He's in the house. People are everywhere in the house, cram wall to wall, out the doors, looking in the windows. It is just a cram around the house. And they hear that Jesus is there and their friend, they love their friend. And he's he has... <clears throat> the palsy and he's 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 he can't get it a bed and he's bedridden like the other man but they carry his bed they say just bring him to jesus and they get the house and they look and they say let's get man i gotta i gotta we gotta get him in there and they start trying hey excuse me we got a we got a lame guy here our friends here well they gotta they get a big row to get that that guy in the bed in there and nobody wants to move and they're all wanting to see you know how it is when you want to be the person to see what's going on and they can't get in there. They're trying. They try the side door. They try. They ask people, look, he needs to get healed. But everybody wants to see the next miracle. <clears throat> Maybe other people have relative, have sick people in there. Maybe they want to hear what he's saying. Maybe they, a lot of them haven't even seen him yet. <clears throat> Maybe <clears throat> they've been waiting uh, a long time to see him. And, well, nobody's letting him in. They can't get in. There's no way. But these men are determined. And they climb up onto the roof. And they remove parts, tiles of the roof. And they lower him down. And I can imagine Jesus is in there. He's sitting in the chair. He's teaching. And all of a sudden, the roof opens up while he's teaching. And he looks up. And down comes a guy in a bed. Right in front of him, it says. And, uh, and, and they bring him in. And, of course, we know he is healed there. <clears throat> this man was healed because he had somebody. The other man wasn't getting healed because he had nobody. And even in that case, Jesus came along. He had somebody. He had Jesus come along. <clears throat> but <clears throat> he was healed because he had somebody. What a sad statement when you have nobody. When you need help. 
when you're messed up, when you can't get it done yourself, when you've struggled and you can't figure it out, when you just don't have the ability. And God set it up that way where that just happens sometimes. Where you just need somebody to help you. you need someone to, to, to help your situation. This man would have been for the rest of his life in a bed somewhere unless his friends would have taken him to Jesus. The other man waited and waited and waited and sat there. Can you imagine how hopeless he was in his bed, waiting to get in the pool and trying to go there again and hearing somebody splash and start celebrating and screaming and crawling back to his bed? Why? I have no man. Maybe he called out. Can somebody, hey guys, I've been here for, for five weeks. <clears throat> Some of you can see, some of you can walk some. Look, I've been waiting. Some of you just got here. Uh, can somebody just let me go one time and I'll get out of my bed? I'll help one of you when it's your turn. But somebody, and nobody. Nobody helped him. And so he didn't get healed for a long time. Because he had no man. He had no man. And God uses people. Number one, sometimes we all need somebody. James 5.16 says, uh, Confess your faults one to another and pray for one another. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Okay? Sometimes we need someone in the church to pray for us. Because we're struggling. And just take them aside and say, Can I, can I have you pray for me? Sometimes you don't want to tell the whole church. That's okay. Maybe you won't need to tell the church, I need you to pray for me, I'm struggling with this, and we'll pray for you, and that's good. Maybe you just need to find two or three and say, hey, I'm really struggling with this, can you pray for me? And, <clears throat> and the foolish thing you, you would do is, because of your pride, not tell anybody, because you say, well, everybody would think I'm a bad person, and, and nobody will understand. Look, there's probably somebody else who will, who's wanting to do that, but they need someone to be bold first. And when you tell them, they might tell you. Because I got news for you. Everybody here struggles sometimes. You're not the only one. There's no temptation taking you, but such as common to man. Now, I know the devil always makes you think you're the only one, and you have the worst temptations of everybody, and why me, and why do I have to struggle with this? It's the worst thing anybody struggles with. <clears throat> and nobody else understands. But the Bible says there's no temptation taking you, but such as common to man. Oh, no, you're a sinner? <gasps> Guess what? Everybody else in here is. <clears throat> you know what? Sometimes you need somebody. So you bore that burden long enough. You're in the situation where you haven't, where you can't do it alone, and God said you need somebody. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man will avail much, and so God does it that way. Galatians six one says, uh, "If any man be overtaken in a fault, ye who are spiritual restore such a one." Who's restoring? The one who is spiritual. God uses people. Some people don't get saved because they have no man to witness to them. See, some people go through their life with no man to help them. And some people have somebody to bring them to Jesus. We all need somebody sometimes. We all need somebody to help us. We all need that. <clears throat> I needed that. Look, I know for sure if I wouldn't have had both Pastor Mutchler as a pastor uh, occasionally with me and uh, Roman White as a friend often with me, I wouldn't have made it. I needed those influences in my life. I need the questions answered. I need someone to tell me you shouldn't be doing that. I need someone to ask about. I need someone to uh, pray for me when I was struggling. I need all those things. <clears throat> and, and fortunately, and I had some men. I had some, some friends to bring me to Jesus. I had some friends to wake me up when I was too uh, lazy to go to church on Sunday and knock on my window because forget knock on the door. It's not going to work. <clears throat> I was a very healthy sleeper. And they had a knock on my window to wake me up when I first started going to church. And check on me. I needed somebody. I needed somebody. I'll never forget there was a man. <clears throat> he's passed away now. Um, he was very old and I knew him. I, I didn't know him well. Uh, we, had, we had a church <clears throat> um, in the next city over. It was a good church. And started changing. When it started changing, a bunch of the good families came to our church. And, uh, and they were good people in, in the church. I don't know why the church changed when, when you're losing all your good people. When, I mean, they lost 150 good people um, because they changed. And they, they came to our church. And... <clears throat> 
He's a very mature, solid Christian. And, uh, and I was a young Christian. I was always very hungry to learn. People didn't have to try to teach me. I was asking questions because uh, I knew how dumb I was. And I knew how ignorant I was about the Word of God. And I was always asking these older Christians questions all the time. And uh, I remember talking to a, uh, a, a guy I worked for, and I said, who has the most influence? And he says, oh, he says, Walter, ha Walter Hodges does. He says, Walter Hodges, he is such a godly man. He's unbelievable. And Walter Hodge Hodges, <clears throat> he's this church I used to go to, and he, he is like my best friend and my spiritual counselor. He kind of took me on as a spiritual child. And this guy, was, this, guy was a, this guy was a World War II veteran I was talking to. He was 70. <laughs> at that time. And he said, Walter calls me every Sunday to make sure I'm going to church. And he said, he calls me once during the week and just checks on how I'm doing. And he really is just really such an important person in my life. I said, wow, that's amazing. <clears throat> Talked to a, another family, and I was with them, and we were, I was their house seat. And I said, who has the most impact on you guys uh, in your life? They, oh, you know, there's this guy, he's just, a, just an old guy at the old church that we went to. His name's Walter Hodges. I'm like a spiritual child. He calls me every single Sunday morning and makes sure I'm up for church. He calls me in the week and checks on how I'm doing. And boy, he's just like, he just, for some reason, just took me under his wing and, and, and really became my spiritual leader and really just, just guides me. You know, I had about seven different people who thought they were the only one Walter Hodges called every Sunday morning and checked on them and guided them and told them when they're doing wrong. And, they would, and this guy was just a saint. I met him one time. I met him one time. He was, he was 75. I met him. He was working at a widow's house, fixing her house. <clears throat> And he was talking to the guy I was with about how he was counseling uh, with a lady whose child had gone insane and whether he was still saved and trying to help her realize that your salvation didn't change because your mind is messed up. And this guy was just, he was a man who was there for a lot of people. Because some people need people. And, and, and there's going to be times when all of us need people. And this man said, I had no man, but these guys had, had men. They had people there. He said, hey, we're worried about this guy named Jesus. We're taking you. And, and he took them there and, and did that. Every, even the best climbers sometimes need a rope team where they tie to each other. So when one guy slips, no matter how good a climber they are, sometimes you slip and you're tied to some other people who are anchored. <clears throat> Why? Because we go through seasons of weakness. Jesus said, hey, I need you to pray for me, guys. My soul is sorrowful unto death. If Jesus stopped to say, I need you guys to pray for me, I reckon we're all going to go through that sometimes, right? <laughs> okay? All of us. Paul begged in, in, in Galatians, in Ephesians 6, hey, guys, pray for me. I need God to pray, you to pray for me. I'll be able to speak the word of God like you should speak it. And, and, and I think it's Galatians 6, 8, or Ephesians 6, 18. And he says, pray for us. You, you just, you need, you need people. And it's a, it can be a woman, it can be, but, but don't bear your, don't bear everything alone and think you don't need anybody. Sometimes you can't get into the pool. Sometimes you need someone to help you. Sometimes you're on top side and you're the one who should be helping people get in the pool. And sometimes you need someone to take you to the pool. Okay. And, uh, and, and so even the best climbers need to, need to tie themselves to strong people. So even if they slip, they'll, they'll have help. Number two, have compassion on those who cannot make it on their own. <laughs> These are both great stories. Look, just because you're not struggling, or just because you're strong in some areas, doesn't mean you, can't, you need to look down on people who are struggling or who don't have your weaknesses. It's so one thing I try not to do is <clears throat> because I'm not this new believer with, you know, all these huge character flaws I started off with. And, and I'm not saying I'm perfect, but I don't I don't have all the struggles I did. Right. Hopefully you don't either. OK, just because I don't struggle in that area anymore doesn't mean I'm better than them. Sometimes it's strange, but our weaknesses are not that big a deal, but their weaknesses are pathetic. <laughs> and, and I don't know why that is if someone has a filthy mouth people who don't have a filthy mouth but have a drinking problem can't believe that guy cusses why can't he quit cussing and the person who's lazy can't understand why that person isn't compassionate 
And the person who's compassionate cannot understand the lazy person. And you know what? I might not be nice to everybody, but you know what? I get up in the morning and go to work every day. What's wrong with you? Because usually our sins are just minor sins, but other people's sins are big ones. Okay? Have compassion. Compassion means I understand you can't do it. You read how many times Jesus said he had compassion on them. He saw the multitudes. There were sheep having no shepherd. They had no food. And he had compassion on them and said, feed them. Compassion is when love is moved into action. And have compassion on people who can't do it themselves. Say, look, what's wrong with you? Get in the water. But he couldn't. They said, you know what? You're paralyzed. We're going to take you to Jesus. Compassion takes people where they are. Look, if somebody's on the side of the road, I cannot drive by them at 45 and grab them at my speed. I have to take them where they are. A church has to let new converts come in who don't know how to talk sometimes. And somebody cussed this week I was talking to. It's, it, we're, we're supposed to be a Christian. And, 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 and look, you got to take them. I'm, not, I'm excusing sin. Sin is sin. It's wrong. You shouldn't do it. But understand, if you cannot take people where they are, you can't take them anywhere. You got to start. They got to start somewhere. And you got to have compassion and say, you know what? I understand you don't have the ability to do that yet. <clears throat> Teach them how to work. Teach them how to pray. Teach them how to go to church every Sunday. There was a time when you didn't go to church every Sunday too, right? And you know what? I forget sometimes because, you know what? I don't struggle to go to church. I, haven't, I didn't struggle to go to church as a layman. I never missed church. Once I started, once I got it, I, I just never stopped. And so me, I don't say, oh, should I go today? Oh, man, I don't know. What game is on? Oh, man, I'm just tired. I can sleep extra. I got so much yard work. I don't, I don't decide if I'm going to church. Let's go to church. Well, you know what? Not everybody's like that, so I need to teach them. Not say, what's wrong with you? Now, sometimes I want to say that. What's wrong with you? Because it's not that hard to go to church, right? It really isn't, in my mind. Look, the address, 25440 Pacific Highway South Kent, Washington. You have a car? Yes. Does it drive? Yes. You have eyes? Yes. Okay, drive to church. <laughs> That's what it because it seems so easy, but you know what? Sometimes it's hard for them. The devil makes it so hard for them. So I need to have compassion and say, let me help you. Let me pick you up on Sunday. Oh, man, if you pick me up, I'll have to go. I know. <laughs> and you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to honk until you come out. Don't do that. My neighbors get mad. We'll come out before I honk too many times. <laughs> you know what? You're helping them. You're helping them. Okay? And, 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 you want to be a blessing to people and have compassion on them. Okay? People are impotent. And, uh, and, and, and what? They can't do it themselves. Impotent. Right. Number three. You don't know what I mean, do you? You don't know if I'm talking impotent or impotent. Number three. Be persistent in your help. Be persistent in your help. We're in uh, Luke, right? Luke, <clears throat> watch this in verse 19. When they, could, uh, when they could not find by what way they might bring him in because of the multitude, they went away and said, I'm sorry, buddy, we tried to get you in there. But it was hard. Listen to me for a second. Ministries always hard. <laughs> you don't understand how many obstacles there are in helping people. If I get, look, if I just stopped right now and told you the obstacles I hit today, I think I had three today. Okay? Uh, uh, I can tell you, just yesterday, I was here, I'm at church, I'm doing my own thing, I'm working, somebody tries to open the door, which is normal, door's locked, and, uh, and I peek out my secret window and look, and it's the uh, fire marshal. And uh, so he's trying the side. He's going to the uh, the door over here with the fire room and stuff like that. And uh, so I I walk out there and he says, "Hey, uh, I was just checking the church here. I noticed you guys having an inspection." And and uh, he started talking to fire marshal. You don't want to see a fire marshal. They have a lot of rules. 
And so I thought, oh, brother. He says, you know what? How about I just inspect it right now? You know, we're not on a schedule. <sighs> and I was so busy yesterday. I had so many things to do. But you know what? I got to get it done. Let's get it done. And, you know, God just gave me favor with him. I knew, I was, by the way, I'm an expert on this, 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 church, this building's fire system. It costs us a lot of money. It was a lot of problems. I told him everything. I said, look, we had the sprinklers. We put the high-pressure ones in this room. We did da, da, da. And he was like, whoa, you know everything about this. He said, look, we thought we would have to do all this stuff. It costs us a lot of money. It costs over ends. What, what do you need to know? And so we started asking questions. I said, yep, this is here, this is here, this is here, this is here. He said, you're good. But you know what? That put me behind on something else. Found out today the rooms that we're supposed to be staying in in there they're overbooked and now we don't have the right amount of rooms for people in the Philippines. I found that out today. Guess we're not going. <laughs> okay, those Bibles were a big difficulty to get here on time. It, 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 they were very difficult, and then it was very difficult to get the tracks here on time. Eight thousand tracks to get sent here. It was also very difficult. Our buses broke down. Guess we can't go. You want me to keep going? How many obstacles I have in the Philippines? I keep going. But you know what? You're always hindered. To help people to make a difference, the devil fights it. There's always going to be, look, there's too many people, what are we going to do? You find a way. If you want to do something for God, you just be persistent. Yes, you know what, that person, it'd be great if that, that person you love would just say, you just tell them, hey, quit doing wrong, come to church. They said, yes, sir. Be there Sunday? I'm quitting doing wrong. If you can do that, come to me. I'm sending you to some people. Okay? But you know what? There's obstacles. Bad friends show up when you come along. Friends they haven't seen in years, but the devil sends them. And all of a sudden, battles come, and the job all of a sudden comes, they work on Sunday, and all of a sudden, discouragements come, and family tells them, you've got to do this, and everything weird happens, and you've got to be a persistent friend. You've got to love them and say, I'm not giving up on this. I'm going to see this person saved. I'm going to see this person fixed. I'm going to be a persistent friend. What do they do? They said, we're dropping them through the roof. You're going to get to Jesus. I don't know if the homeowner liked it. <laughs> okay. But they... I don't know where they got the rope from. I don't know how they figured out to tear the roof apart. I don't know how they figured out where in the room Jesus was. But somehow, Jesus looked and there he came. And they were persistent. Sometimes you need to believe for those who do not believe. Yeah. Watch this. It's a fascinating phrase here. It says in verse 19, When they could not find by what way they might bring him in because of the multitude, they went upon the housetop and let him down through the tiling with his couch into the midst before Jesus. And when Jesus saw whose faith? Their faith. Not his faith. Not the guy who was paralyzed. We didn't know if he asked. We have no record about whether this guy asked, whether he wanted it, or anything. It wasn't his faith that impressed Jesus. It was their faith. When Jesus saw their faith, what was their faith? Their faith was enough to persist and find a way. Because they believed Jesus could fix them. When they saw, when Jesus saw their faith, he said unto him, Man, thy sins are forgiven thee. <clears throat> There are people who you need to believe for them because they don't believe. You need to believe God can change your life. You need to believe God can work in their life. You need to believe God can save their family, whether they have the faith or not, because you're a persistent friend. You'll find the same thing in Luke 18. It's not Luke 18, it's Luke 13. I'm going to find it. It's Luke 13, so right-hand page, about three-quarters way down the column. <laughs> Luke 11 is going to be, now that I think of it. Persistent friend. Luke 11, verse 5, right there. Right hand page, bottom of the column. And uh, there it is. And he says, I need bread. He says, uh, you know, it's bedtime. He says, I'm going to knock until you give me the bread. 
In verse 8 it says, I say unto though he will not rise and give him because he is his friend, yet because of his importunity he will, he will rise and give him as much as he needeth. I say unto you, ask and it shall, it shall be given you. Seek and it shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and him that seeketh findeth. Him that knocketh it shall be opened unto him. Just keep on asking. Be persistent as a friend. Be persistent. You say, I've been trying, Pastor, and this person isn't changing. Be persistent. Keep praying. Keep asking. Keep telling them the word of God. Be a persistent friend. Believe when they don't have the belief. Be a persistent friend. We're going to get you to Jesus. Because many people would have said, eh, we tried. I guess we'll, I guess it wasn't God's will. But be a persistent friend. I have no man, but some people have men. Some people have that in their lives, and uh, we're blessed if we have that. Let's be that for somebody else, and when you need it, make sure you understand God has put you in a position in your life, in your life where you need somebody. And that's not bad. It's a season. You'll be strong again, and then somebody will need you. But when you need them, when you need a man or a woman, when you need somebody to help you, to bring you to Jesus, to help you in your life, when you're overtaken with a fault or whatever the condition is, you go and say, I have no man, and see if God's put in your life, and God will put someone in your mind to call. Or someone in church will mysteriously ask you, Hey, you doing all right? And you need to say, I think God is working this out. No, I'm not really. Can I talk to you? Can you pray for me for something? How about you call me? Let's go to lunch this week. And, 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 and let some man be there for you. Because the man who said, I have no man, would have been there for the rest of his life. He would have never gotten in in time. Jesus came. He had a man. He had Jesus. Because no, he wasn't going to get it any other way. Nobody was concerned about him. And the other guy, he had four friends. And, and those four friends. I have no man. It's a sad statement. Be there for somebody else. And also when you need it, uh, get someone to help you.